Let's get right into it. Number 7. Poisoning. The Silent Roommate. You walk through the forest. Are you worried about accidentally consuming a deadly toadstool? Sure. You walk into your kitchen. Are you worried about the cabinet under the sink? You should be. Here's the dark, messy truth. Unintentional poisoning, primarily from drugs and medicines but also from household chemicals, is the single leading cause of accidental death in the home. Not the wilderness, the home. We treat our medicine cabinet like a candy dispenser and our cleaning supplies like harmless jugs of colorful liquid. You've got five different kinds of prescription bottles, a couple of ibuprofen containers, and a jug of bleach all chilling out together in the same zip code. The risk is so high because the danger is constant, unseen, and often involves a mix-up. Your sleepy, half-awake self grabs the wrong pill, or you store antifreeze in a repurposed water bottle. That mountain lion you saw a documentary about? It's nowhere near as efficient as the deadly cocktail sitting ten feet from you right now. Your house isn't just dangerous. It's a wildly successful chemist. Number 6. The Electrical Spiderweb You've convinced yourself you'll die from a venomous snake while camping. You won't. You'll die because you stuck a fork in a toaster as a joke. Or more likely, because your house wiring is older than your grandparents and is quietly catching fire in the wall. Electrical fires and electrocutions are one of the most insidious, non-animal-related ways your house gets you. We live in a world plugged into a massive, shaky grid, and yet we treat electricity like magic instead of a highly unstable force of nature that we've barely contained. You ignore that flickering light, you daisy-chain five power strips together under your desk, and you continue to use that one appliance that smells vaguely of burnt plastic and regret. Your brain has developed what psychologists call habituation. You are so used to the constant presence of potential danger, the smell of old wiring, the sparking outlet, that you no longer register it as a threat. But the danger doesn't care if you're used to it. The house fire that starts behind your dry wall doesn't send a warning text. It just vaporizes your safe haven, which is a far more effective kill than any grizzly bear could ever manage. The forest is simple. Your house is a complex, overheated nightmare of copper and cloth. Number 5. The Quiet Carbon Killer You worry about air quality when you walk outside into a smoggy city, but what about the invisible, odorless assassin sharing your futon? Carbon monoxide. This isn't just a fun fact for your general knowledge quiz, it is a genuine, silent menace that your smoke detector can't even handle. Which is why you need a dedicated carbon monoxide detector, you maniac. The problem, psychologically, is one of non-salience. Our survival instincts are tuned for things we can see, smell, or hear. A predator's growl, smoke from a fire, the thump of an intruder. Carbon monoxide, however, gives you none of those cues. Your brain literally can't process the threat until it's too late, and you're just getting sleepy on the couch, convinced you've earned a nap. This gas is a byproduct of incomplete combustion from furnaces, water heaters, and fireplaces, all the cozy things that make a house feel like home. It tricks your red blood cells into picking it up instead of oxygen, leading to a gentle, utterly peaceful demise. A house can't get any more passive-aggressive than that. The worst thing the forest does is give you hay fever. Your house actively tries to swap your oxygen for its own personal exhaust fumes. Number 4. Drowning in the Porcelain Pit You think of drowning as a big-budget movie scene involving a stormy ocean and dramatic rescues. But for certain vulnerable populations, namely the very young and the very old, the deadliest body of water isn't the Pacific, it's the 50 gallons sitting in your bathtub. This is a classic case of proximity bias. We fear what is distant and spectacular, the tsunami and ignore the low-level, high-frequency threat right next to us, the poorly monitored bath. The statistics are grim. The home bathroom is a hotspot for fatal and non-fatal accidents. For kids under four, the tub is literally one of the most dangerous spots in the house. For the elderly, it's a slick, hard-tiled chamber of doom, often involving a combination of slippery soap, poor balance, and that charming lack of grab bars you insisted on because they ruined the aesthetic. You're worried about that alligator in the swamp? Your slick ceramic floor is a far more effective ambush predator. The forest requires effort to kill you. Your bathroom just requires you to briefly close your eyes or attempt a slightly too ambitious lunge for the shampoo. Number 3. The Furniture Freefall We end with a classic piece of domestic irony. Your furniture, the stuff you paid a premium for to make your house feel cozy, 
is actively trying to crush you. I'm not talking about that time you stubbed your toe on the coffee table. I'm talking about massive objects tipping over. Dressers, televisions, bookcases, and shelving units are heavy, top-heavy, and remarkably unstable when a curious child or a wobbly adult decides to use them as a ladder. This is a physics problem compounded by inattention. We assume something heavy is stable, which is a lethal assumption. Thousands of people are injured or killed every year when furniture, especially poorly secured dressers, performs a perfect, fatal somersault onto someone. You buy anti-bear spray for camping, but do you buy anti-tip anchors for that giant, beautiful bookshelf? Nope. The worst thing a tree does is drop a pine cone on your head. Your sleek, designer housewares will happily perform the finishing move in your living room proving that the greatest danger usually comes from the things we trust the most. Number 2. The Heat Homicide You bundle up against the cold wilderness, but you rarely consider that your own house is a master of thermal execution. I'm talking about house fires. You are more likely to perish in a fire that starts from a faulty appliance, a rogue candle, or a forgotten pot on the stove, than you are to be killed by an uncontrollable blaze ripping through a dry canyon. Here's the cruel irony. We load our houses up with highly flammable synthetics, polyester bedding, polyurethane foam couches, cheap plastic electronics turning our domestic bliss into a highly effective tinderbox. When a fire starts, it consumes these materials fast, producing deadly smoke and heat in mere minutes. A phenomenon firefighters call flashover. Your brain, used to the slow progression of natural phenomena, simply can't process the speed of this chemical reaction. You're still gathering your keys when your exit path is already gone. The forest fire is a natural spectacle you can often see coming from miles away. The house fire is an intimate, rapid betrayal fueled by your own stuff. Number 1. The projectile kitchenware. You worry about falling rocks in the mountains, but have you considered the catastrophic potential of a simple plate? I'm talking about cuts and lacerations, primarily those incurred in the kitchen. Knives, broken glassware, and can openers all necessary tools for survival, but ones we use with a terrifying level of complacency. The kitchen is a high-risk area because of motor routine automation. You've cut vegetables a million times, so you stop paying attention. Your movements become fast and sloppy. Your focus drifts to the TV, and then slice. A trip to the emergency room for stitches is far more common than any wound inflicted by a natural predator, we treat our incredibly sharp, efficient instruments of food preparation like dull toys. A forest requires a massive, complex accident, like a tree falling on you, to inflict damage. Your kitchen requires only a momentary lapse in judgment and a freshly sharpened chef's knife.